How would you characterize the state of mobile optimization? I mean, overall, are we in a good place? Is it a mess? Um, I would actually say it's exciting. Um, I don't want to say it's a mess, but it is early. So in the space of optimization when it comes to mobile, there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of elements that we don't know as well as we do uh, the same elements for desktop mm -hmm. optimization. So there's some unknowns in there, and it's very early in the, in the sort of the life cycle of performance optimization, which also includes how do you measure, mm -hmm. how do you um, sort of gauge the impact of your performance uh, improvements, et cetera, et cetera. We're very early um, in that life cycle. Uh, I would sort of say this is where we were with desktop, say, four years ago, three okay. and a half, four years ago. Um, so that part of it sort of makes it early. It's in the sort of the learning curve. We're very early. But that's actually really exciting because it's a huge space for opportunities. Right? There's lots of opportunities for interesting things to do, performance improvements to make, performance problems to address. So I would say we're just in an early place. And uh, I actually think it's really exciting because it's a, a very greenfield sort of space for us right now. Now, on the desktop side, there are certain best practices, right, yeah. where it's the first things that you start with. Is that the case on the mobile side? Are there first steps that a, a site manager should take? Yeah, it's, that's a good question. So there are similarities between the sort of best practices. The application of those things is a little bit different. Um, so there are certain limitations with mobile platforms that aren't there with desktop platforms, like the, uh, the size of this cache, for example. That's something that's different in mobile um, platforms than it is for desktop platforms. Mm -hmm. So we have to think differently when it comes to applying these techniques, but there are a number of things that we should be thinking when we think about mobile performance optimization. But the first thing, like the first piece of education here is think mobile. If you are a site owner that wants to have a mobile presence, think mobile. Not necessarily will the site that you're pre presenting to your desktop users work as just as well on a mobile platform. So you have to think mobile, and then you have to optimize with mobile in mind. Mm -hmm. um, some of those things will be the same as the, the stuff that we did for desktop. So there, there could be certain practices that are actually no different. The application of some of the other ones will be different, though, and that's a limitation of the platforms and the, the form factors and things like this. So that very first step is simply to get into that mindset. Oh, you this got is, it. This you is a mobile. To. You have okay. to think mobile first. Now, given the different platforms and browsers and screen sizes, hardware, connection yeah. speeds, all those types of things, do you feel that mobile optimization is more complicated than desktop op optimization? Um, it appears more complicated, but I, I don't want to... I don't want to say that it's complicated. I would say it's more um, um, varied, hmm. let's say, or it's more colorful. Uh, let's That's say. good. <laughs> it's a more colorful nice, yeah. experience. Um, there are certain things because we're so early in the in the life cycle of mobile uh, optimization. There are certain things that are harder to do. Measurement is a big problem right now, but it's getting better at a, a very quick pace. Uh, Web page test actually this morning announced a mobile testing platform. They've had a desktop platform for a long time. Now you can go on webpagetest.org and actually test what your site looks like on a mobile device. So things are getting better and better. But because we're so early in that learning curve, um, they appear complicated. But they're not as, they're not, I wouldn't say they're complicated. They're just, we're just early. Mm -hmm. There are a whole bunch of unknowns to us, though. For example, they're, they're, what's happening inside the carrier is a huge mystery to everyone. Like We're all considering this a big black box. We have no visibility into there. That makes things more challenging, certainly, when it comes to measurement and, well, what do I do if the carrier does this, for example? So I, I think it appears complicated, and with certain instances of testing and optimization, I think it'll feel complicated. Um, but I think it's just a function of how early we are in this, and with time, it's all going to get better, I think. Right. So last question, and switching gears mm -hmm. a little bit. In a recent profile that we ran on Radar, mm -hmm. You had mentioned that you, you, you had a project that tapped Google Analytics to track user behavior related to web performance. Right. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. What, what was that and sure. how did that work? Yeah, it's actually really cool. So um, um, there is a talk that Artur Bergman did last year at Velocity that's a good example of this. Um, so it's, it'll show, sort of show what this actually means uh, in the real world. But here's the basic premise. Um, and this was a bit, a bit more applicable, say, a year and a half ago before GA got into performance world, because mm -hmm. now they're measuring yep. uh, uh, performance on the page. So the idea is, one of the cool things about GA is that they're, they're, it's extensible. So it is this huge platform, 
storing lots of data, so it's big data, and it's just a huge store of interesting data about what's happening with real user um, uh, sort of trends on your site. But they also let it be a bit extensible, so you can put whatever you want in there to also keep track of mm -hmm. as the users flow through your site. Well, one of those things could be measurement. You can measure something independently and then put it into the GA beacon back to their warehouse, and then go back in later and say, hey, you know, I can see bucketized versions of performance on my on my on my pages, so that's basically what this was. Users of ours that were using GA, we would c sort of piggyback on that beacon and put um, sort of performance metrics in there. GA has gotten a lot better at this now. They're measuring performance themselves. They're making performance extensible. So inside their their page performance um, sort of tracking, now you can have your own performance um, metrics get in there. So they are getting better at this themselves, but. The cool thing about it is like the sandbox that yeah. you can go in there and play with and keep track of stuff that's important to you, and that's what we're doing. Um, so it's a cool, it's just a neat way to leverage something that's already out there and get right. insightful data. Yeah, out of taking it. the platform and totally. twisting it a little bit. And not bit having to, to worry about like, oh my God, where do I put all this data? And you know, well, but I also want bounce rate. So they also give you all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You just get performance on top of it. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking it. the my time. My pleasure.